welcome into another edition of Talking Finchburg on this first day of December. Yeah, that's right. It's Tuesday, December 1st, 2020. Jeremy Crosby here with you. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Glad you're uh, here with us uh, as uh, we wrap up another, well, it was kind of cold day, but sunny out for the most part. So there was that. And, uh, well, above uh, or right, uh, I've heard above average or right above, you know, right there, a little bit on the warmer side. Uh, but uh, we've got all that uh, stirring up and uh, keeping us about the same weather pattern all week here so i didn't see any rain or snow in the forecast so got to be excited about that uh, as uh, we work through uh, this day we've got a busy show today i don't got a lot to get to uh or i don't have a lot to get to i can't spend a lot of time off the top i got stuff to get to uh we'll be uh, getting you updated on the headlines here in just a minute plus we'll check in uh talk about the christmas in the park this year changing it up and uh, we'll uh, talk about uh why chapel valley church uh, and their congregation uh, is so uh, interested in helping out the community we'll share that uh coming up plus we'll check in with the department of a trade consumer protection as uh, we're talking about pet scams, we want to make sure that you don't, uh, if you're interested in getting a pet for the holiday, that you don't lose out uh, as there's been a uh, widespread pet scam going on. Uh, we'll have the breakdown coming up with the Department of Aid, Trade Consumer Protection. But first, we do turn to the headlines that we talked about this morning, bringing it up again here. We've got construction to tell you about. You're like, well, isn't it going to the wintertime? I don't know, but this construction's getting going. Military Ridge Path and Cannonball Path to be closed for sanitary sewer replacement beginning December 7th. What are we talking about here? Uh, well, basically, uh, the Madison Metropolitan Sewerage District is replacing the existing uh, interceptor along the Military Ridge Trail and Cannonball Path between McKee Road and Dunn's Marsh. This project, known as the Nine Springs Valley Interceptor Improvements uh, between McKee Road and Dunn's Marsh, will protect public health by replacing deteriorating infrastructure and increase the capacity to serve growing communities. Work is anticipated to go from December 7th, 2020 through uh, and be completed on December of 2021. So this project uh, has a ways to go and we'll keep you updated with the latest here on Talking Fitchburg. All right, I want to talk to you about Shop with the Cop. Yeah, this is important. Many of you have inquired uh, if Shop with the Cop is still happening this year and we are happy to say that it is. This is according to the Shop with the Cop, Dane County and Corp. Uh, it says here, however, it's been uh, this <laughs> drastically modified because of COVID-19. Cops will be uh, will not be shopping one-on-one -on -one with children and won't have the opportunity to bond with the kiddos like we have in the past with the challenges and the struggles that COVID has brought uh, this year for uh, families and more. We felt that this year, would more than ever, they wanted to uh, shop for the local families. So law enforcement is here to support them and they're excited to provide gifts for families throughout Dane County. And if you're interested in donating to their cause, that information is on your screen. Uh, and uh, it's it's great. It's a story that uh, story I've been out uh, on in tape before. It is amazing uh, what they do. Uh, this organization and i'm glad they're uh, working with the families this year as they do they work with the families and just usually uh, tied into the kiddos but uh, this is an uh, awesome uh, awesome uh, experience still and uh, officers will still be out shopping and they'll either be in person or shopping online all right i want to tell you about winter driving do you have your checklist ready if you don't here it is yeah stumped uh Stumped by the uh, hard uh, to uh, shop for person on your list? Well, give me the gift of safety. That sounds like something I would do. Uh, and a winter uh, car kit may be the answer. When it comes to severe storms and or extreme cold, you could save a life. There's a lot of winter tips uh, at uh, Department of Health Services, Wisconsin. Uh, you can check their website for more information. Of course, DOT. But there is the easy uh, list for you uh, to help uh, with uh, shopping uh, this year. Very important, yeah. It's a good, uh, good thing to have uh, in your vehicle. All right, got a COVID-19 update for you. Uh, we got these numbers in uh, this morning. Uh, and it says here, another family uh, lost a loved one to COVID-19. And we added 118 people to the dashboard. Uh, and 172 people are currently hospitalized with 42 people in the ICU. This is uh, in Dane County, by the way. We anticipated a uh, long wait time at a Lion Energy test site today, which uh, we heard the lines were uh, very long. So if you don't have any symptoms, consider waiting to get a test until tomorrow or the next day when the wait time should be a little bit slower though I would anticipate those would be pretty busy this week uh, as uh, we coming off the holidays so 
certainly you can uh, go out to the website publichealthmdc.com uh, for more information about the testing site times and more and don't forget uh, that Fitchburg Family Pharmacy does have uh, free testing as well it's by appointment only and you can get signed up through their website all right that does it for the headlines coming up next we check in with Christmas in the park with a twist next right here on Talking Fitchburg we're exercising at the Fitchburg Senior Center. We do aerobics, balance, strength training, posture. We want you to stay healthy and strong and exercise. Keep on being fit. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joining me today from Chapel Valley Church, we've got Susie back on the show. First time uh, on the uh, digital platform. Uh, welcome yeah. to the show, Susie. How are you doing? I do well. Thank you so much for having me, Jeremy. I appreciate having this time. Uh, well, we're glad uh, glad we're able to, to catch up with you. We know you've got a lot of things going on, and especially this time of year, as we uh, come up to uh, the Christmas time, uh, it, you have your big event, uh, Christmas in the Park, a very successful event. And then I sigh because there's this thing out here called COVID, and um, and in all seriousness, you still want to provide the, the best uh, community help, uh, which I know you're, you're so, so proud of it and so engaged in the community. Uh, but uh, tell us uh, what's going on with Christmas in the park this year. Yeah, so um, we kind of last minute, I mean, we were considering if we were gonna be able to do Christmas in the park and uh, decided initially that we were gonna be doing Christmas in the park and do it kind of like a drive-through model. So um, we had decided we're gonna do one location kind of streamline, you know, how many volunteers we needed. Um, and then the 17th of November, the new mandate came out. And so we just wanted to be mindful of um, what is going on around us and the community in which we're in. And so we decided um, let's switch up what we're doing and bring Christmas to the park, Christmas in the park to the people. And so um, that's what we're doing. So everything that we had kind of emotion, we just switched gears. And now we're going to be bringing Christmas to the park, to, um, to our community, to our neighbors, and we're going to be delivering all of the Christmas trees this year. So Susie, how many trees are we talking about that you, uh, you will be uh, delivering and will you be bringing lunch at the same time? <laughs> um, so we are, I, right now we have about a hundred Christmas trees. Um, that can change usually day of the uh, day that we pick up the Christmas trees. Um, they usually give us whatever they have left over. So we know that that can be anywhere from 20 to 20 to 30 additional Christmas trees. So we have a little less than we normally have had in the past, um, but we're still at 100 Christmas trees. So um, there's that. So we're um, we're on our on our side. We're forming teams of um, small teams of people that are going to literally load up their trucks or their trailers um, and do some contactless. You know, think Grubhub. I don't know. I've used Grubhub quite a bit this uh, in this season. Um, or the delivery service, that's what we're thinking. Um, we're gonna come knock on your door. Um, obviously we can't bring your Christmas tree in um, or set it up for you. I think that, you know, even setting up, that's never fun for anybody <laughs> setting up a Christmas tree. So we can't do that. Uh, we won't be doing that, um, but we'll be delivering about a hundred Christmas trees this year. Why does Chapel Valley do this event uh, every year? Why, why is it so important? You know, we find it's important for a few reasons, you know, initially in the format that we normally do when we're at, um, you know, Hegel Jamestown Park or we're at Nine Springs, um, it really is an opportunity for us to bring the community together. Um, when we do our events, we're not just looking to be, and I think I've said this before, you know, party planners or we do something really cool, but really the intentionality of it is to promote community to get to know your neighbors, to get to know, you know, we've had the benefit of having um, our wonderful first responders um, of Fitchburg, so whether it's the police, the fire, EMS, you know, having them show up at our events or um, our city leaders be there. And so generally it's important for us to just continue to create environments where we can um, have community, build bridges and get to know one another. Um, and then with Christmas in the park in particular, for us, you know, we just know that in normal circumstances, holidays can be a really rough time for people for various reasons, um, whether it's um, lost, you know, uh, loved ones that they've lost or being away from family because maybe you're living in one place, your family's living in another. And so um, for us, Christmas in the park is all about also having the tree represent um, for us like a symbol of hope and whatever hope might be for you. And so we just realized this year, we wanted to capitalize on wherever people might find themselves 
there is hope out there. And so we feel like let's bring trees to you as that reminder um, that wherever you find yourself, um, you're seen, you're known, and, um, and it's just a little something that we can do. I know from uh, talking to you at past events, um, it, your congregation is amazing for volunteering. Uh, why, uh, as a church, uh, it's a very special, uh, special thing to see everybody kind of come together um, for you as a pastor. What's that like seeing everybody uh, uh, from your church uh, kind of come together and, and pull this and, and many other events off uh, each and every year? Okay, you're gonna make me cry. Okay, you didn't tell me that I was gonna have to have <laughs> tissues here. <laughs> oh man, Jeremy, come on. Um, no, you know, our congregation is so very special to us. Um, they, yeah, they hold a dear place in, in my heart, obviously. And um, they are committed to bringing hope to people. And they are all at varying life um, ages, um, and so I think that each one of the reason, each person for their own reason, when they come together with us, has that special place in, the, you know, in their heart for our community. Um, whether it's to give back um, to the community, whether it's to build a relationship with someone. You know, I, I think about my mom, my mom lives with us, but I just think about all the different people she's connected with over the last few years in her, the way, you know, way she's volunteered and the special connection she has made with people her age, um, with young moms, um, and so I just think for our church community, uh, it's just a great opportunity to uh, connect with people. And, you know, I believe, and I've said, probably said this before, I believe the answer to our, some, a lot of the issues we're facing are found within our community. And I think that our church believes that they have an answer or a solution to something. So if we can build those relationships, let's do it. And so they, um, sometimes my husband and I chuckle at the fact that they they trust us to the capacity that they do. Um, because when we became senior pastors, um, it was a different strategy we wanted to approach when it came to our community. And so um, they have jumped on board and supported us, whether it's financially, whether it's volunteering, um, whether it's volunteering and financially, whatever it may be. Um, but our church community has really um, given open handedly and still continues to do so. And so for me, um, I think that that's what part of a church community should do. Um, is uh, be influential within their community. And so it just makes me um, extremely grateful for the people in our congregation. Yeah, I think it's uh, something uh, really unique to have here in the city of Fitchburg for what uh, uh, your group does. Uh, and again, being that I've been able to see it firsthand, it, it's amazing this event and the events that you put on, um, the generosity uh, from, from your church is, is impressive. And your forward thinking on community. Uh, I love the word community and uh, glad that you um, are here and in our community helping out uh, as as we transition back to to the the, the Christmas tree piece here. Uh, everybody has a chance to get a tree. How can they how can they get a tree and can it be anywhere in Fitchburg? Yeah, so um, we are this Christmas tree event. You know, really first and foremost is for our city of uh, city of Fitchburg residents, um, but we also know um, it's not just limited to that. So we're gonna deliver about you know. I, I don't think they, I, I forgot if there was like a, a number, but you know, the west side of Madison, Fitchburg, um, Oregon, we know that there are outskirting communities around us that, um, you know, where we're located in Fitchburg, that's the beauty is uh, we're kind of in the midst of all of these other cities. Um, so we are gonna, you know, deliver within reason, I guess I should say, um, but <laughs> Fitchburg first and foremost is our priority. And so um, people can register for their Christmas trees. And there's a few ways they can do it. They can go to our church website, just chapelvalley.org backslash Christmas in the park. Um, they can register on Facebook. So Facebook, if you, um, you know, search our church page, which is Chapel Valley Church. Um, and then there is also a Christmas in the park event. And so all three of those places, you'll see a link that says um, register for Christmas trees. And so we just want to make sure that people are paying attention to the information that they put in. So we are asking for their phone numbers. We are asking for their address. We are asking for their email. Um, and that just helps us can, you know, be able to communicate the day of delivery. And so um, that's going to be Saturday. I don't even know if I said this yet. Saturday, December 5th. It is December 5th, right? Is that Saturday? Yeah, it's yes. December 5th. Yep, no worries. December 5th. <laughs> Um, oh, you got you so nervous now. Oh my goodness. Because <laughs> I keep just, you know, who, who keeps 
track of days anymore, Jeremy. I'm just like, it's someday this week. It is very yeah. true. I, I must say, I, I every day when I start the show here, I'm looking at the calendar just to remind myself where we're at. So I have no made worries. Plenty of er- I have made plenty of errors within these last, well, I mean, period, but just when it comes to dates and time frames and stuff, um, <laughs> you know, fall out the window. Um, right, anyway, no worries. Saturday, December 5th. Um, and we will, what we're going to do is we're still um, working out the logistics of um, the details of that. But what, we're, what we will be doing is um, texting people to let them know the time frame or emailing them to let them know the time frame and um, our strategy on this end. So people are, you know, because who likes a three to five time window? You know, you're just like, when are you coming? And then you know, the person comes at like seven or something. So we are being strategic of how we're grouping the deliveries so that if we say, you know, within a time frame, and we feel confident that we're not trying to get, you know, from one side of Fitchburg all the way other, you know, to the other side of Fitchburg. <laughs> we're going right. to be mindful of that um, for our deliveries. Man, well, you, uh, again, uh, thank you for, for everything that uh, you, your husband uh, and your church have uh, done for the residents of City of Fitchburg and beyond. And uh, good luck with this event. Uh, very excited. Uh, how, how long can they register up till... Um, is it going to be until the until you get them all out or? Yeah, so delivery will base. I mean, excuse me. Registrant registration will be open until um, until we every all the trees have been registered for, um, and then okay. that, up to that point, I would say even to that Friday, what we're going to do is then we're going to create a waiting list um, for people, and so it's going to be we're going to do our best to do real time um, updates and um, tree counting and all of those things. So. If we show up at the farm and they tell us they have 50 more trees, you know, we'll be communicating with our team down here to open registration or connect with those people. So our team is, I have a great, great team. I always say they make me look great um, because they are so amazing at what they do and so uh, diligent as well. So it's going to be real, real, real to time update, um, whether it's once our trees are at the max with registration then opening that waiting list and then going from there. Yeah. Again, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. And uh, if I don't see you, have hop- happy holidays and uh, send us some pictures so we can share that out uh, uh, with our viewers uh, after the event, uh, mainly because I just want to see how this coordinates. And again, if you have one on top of your car and you're driving down the road, maybe I'll talk to the officers at Fitchburg and let you get away with that one. Oh my gosh. I try to, I try to steer clear. I try to like not speed and stuff. I mean, ever, but especially if I'm in Fitchburg, because that's going to be a really awkward conversation getting pulled over. So I try to follow all the laws the best that I can. So I don't have to have any more awkward encounters uh, with people in general, but especially the police. (laughs) Susie, always a treat to uh, catch up with you. Glad you're uh, keeping up with the law. We appreciate that. (laughs) Uh, thank you so, so much for your time. Yeah. And uh, right. we're just going to close that. We're going to close this chapter yeah. right here and uh, we'll do it again next year. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, happy holidays to you and your family as well, Jeremy. You as well. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Oh, that's Susie. She's one of a kind, folks. And again, uh, head out to their website, uh, Facebook page, or to the event website uh, for more information. And uh, yeah, it's an awesome holiday treat uh, around uh, these parts. So I certainly appreciate that. We'll take a quick break. More to come. You're watching Talking Fitchburg. We're exercising at the Fitchburg Senior Center. We do aerobics, balance, strength training, posture. We want you to stay healthy and strong and exercise. Keep on being fit. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Honorary Forest Ranger Betty White here, lending a hand to my dear friend Smokey Bear. Because for 75 years, he's only said, Only you can prevent wildfires. But there's a lot more to say. Like if you park your car on tall, dry grass, the hot exhaust pipe can start a wildfire. So keep the animals safe, especially the cute shirtless one. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Cuando estaba en crianza temporal, nunca sabía cuándo me iba a tener que mudar, así que siempre tenía mi maleta lista. Y un día me adoptaron. Mis nuevos padres me abrieron sus corazones y su hogar. 
Ellos me cocinan mi desayuno favorito todas las mañanas. Mis padres me llevan a viajes que jamás pensé podría ir. Me dieron un hogar y una mejor excusa para usar esa maleta. Mis padres no son perfectos, pero son perfectos para mí. Some chores you dread. You do them. But that doesn't mean you're happy about it. Then there's registering with the Selective Service. If you're a young man turning 18, the law says you have to register. It'll keep you eligible for college loans, government jobs, and training, and it only takes two minutes, which makes it not only your most important chore, but the easiest. When you turn 18, register at sss.gov or the local post office. One in three adults has prediabetes. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joining me today from the Department of Aid Trade Consumer Protection, it's Trisha Collins. Trisha, welcome back to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Thank you for uh, coming back on. This is a good sign that you came back for another show. So uh, we had your uh, first go around a little bit earlier in the month, and we're, we're glad to have you back here uh, you. after your debut. And today we're going to be talking, and this one is very surprising to me, uh, but uh, I'm very excited to learn a little bit about it. Uh, it's avoid pet scams during the holiday shopping season. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us what's going on here. Yeah, we're receiving some calls and complaints from Wisconsin consumers about some pet scams that are occurring. And with the holiday seasons coming up, some families may be thinking about adding a puppy or a kitten to their family. And we just wanted to kind of walk you through what we're hearing and then provide some tips on how you can avoid a pet scam. So in the, the scam that we're hearing about, it, it starts most likely on an online marketplace. So maybe a social media site or, or web page. And the scammer posts what appears to be pictures of legitimate puppies and kittens in your area. And so when the, the consumer reaches out, they contact the buyer or the seller and the seller informs them that they just sold the last animal, but they can connect them with another seller that is in a different area. And what this does then is it, it, it doesn't allow the buyer to actually see the animal before they purchase it. So then the buyer reaches out to this new seller and purchases the animal, agrees to purchase the pet, and oftentimes is asked to pay with a prepaid debit card or a wire transfer or gift card, something that's not traceable or refundable. And so they, they make that payment and then they get contacted again by the seller. And this time the seller says, well, now we need you to pay fees to ship your pet or to rent a crate to ship your pet. So then the, the buyer, pays more money, again, usually through a cash app or some unrefundable or transferable way um, that the money can't be returned back to the buyer. And in some times they actually get contacted a third time and then there's more fees for maybe licensing what or is. insurance. Yeah, they just keep contacting and then the consumer kind of realizes, hmm, something doesn't seem right here, but by that time they've spent potentially thousands of dollars on their new pet. So, um, and they can't, they don't have a way to get that money back. That's a, that's a pretty, uh, pretty crazy scam right there. Uh, but I can see just how uh, easy it is to uh, think you got something coming uh, that, uh, but, but then there's just more, uh, more red tape here. Uh, so let's break this down. There's, there's probably some tips here on how we can avoid uh, losing out here on, on this particular scam. What do you got for us? Yeah, so first we recommend that you search the business or individual that is selling the puppies or the dogs. You can do your own search. Do they have a website? Do they have, do they show a history of, of, of selling um, animals? And can you, can you find that out there? Another great tip is to ask the seller for the name of their veterinarian. And then you can take that veterinarian's name and you can see if it's on the list of licensed veterinarians in Wisconsin, and we have that list on the DadCap webpage. And then we would encourage you to independently go and get that veterinarian's contact information and reach out to him or her and see, does this individual actually have animals? Um, it's a great way to independently verify and find out information about the seller and, and their animals. Um, we encourage you not to pay anything up front because a lot of times they'll just take the money and then disappear if they're there. This is a scam. Consider, you know, credit cards have greater fraud protection. Um, remember wiring money, gift cards, things like that are just not going to be traceable or reversible. And then we encourage people just to take time and talk to someone. 
it's an exciting time. The possibility of adding a kitten or a, a puppy to your family is really exciting. But you know, slow down, do some research, talk to your friends and family about it. Don't fall um, given to high pressured sales tactics or or any har harassing or threatening um, contacts or communications. Just you know, take your time, talk with others, and, and do your research. If you do believe that this is a legitimately a scam, uh, what would you recommend first, contacting police or, or contacting uh, uh, you folks at DATCP? You can certainly reach out to us. You can file a complaint online at dadcapdatcp.wi.gov, or you can reach out to our consumer protection hotline and talk to somebody right away at 1-800-422-7128. And they can help you navigate kind of what are the next best steps. Um, you know, if the scammer also got personal information from you, you might wanna explore that and see what resources are available to help you work through a possible identity theft issue. And we have that available to it at the Bureau of Consumer Protection. I was just going to follow up on that uh, question right there and say, uh, what's the, the likelihood of identity theft uh, being a part of this uh, particular scam? Yeah, it's possible. We haven't heard of that in particular, but it's certainly possible if they're sending you emails with links, if they're collecting personal information, uh, financial information. So um, if you have concerns about that, certainly reach out to us and, and we can help you navigate that process. And uh, do you suggest uh, uh, contracts wise here? Like, should there be a contract because you are making an exchange? Like, is that something that uh, might be a benefit to uh, yeah. both parties? Yeah, that's a great, so, yeah, great thing. Uh, I know a lot of um, contracts will lay out kind of the terms, what's included, what's not included, when payments are due, pickups and all, and all those details. It can be very helpful, yes. Yeah, I'm, all I see here is thinking is documentation, documentation, and more documentation. And then, you know, as we talked about last time, you see something with paying in gift card, wire transfer, or cash. Um, that, that to me is a huge red flag, and and that's what they're seeing here. So, mm -hmm. you know, big red flag when you see those. Yes, absolutely. And the you know some of these purchases are in the hundreds to thousands of dollars so it can be a you know a large financial loss and you know really difficult because you you're expecting that little puppy or cat and then and they disappear so. well and it's so easy too because you're like well it's a purebred you know they can they can amplify it you know that mm -hmm. that purchase uh, in many different ways wow uh well that's uh unfortunate scam to be talking about during the holidays but i'm glad we're getting it out there yeah. uh and again like you had mentioned uh head to the website for more information trisha thank you so much uh great job and uh, looking forward to checking back when uh, checking back in with you next month thank you so much it's great to be here all right all right, that's Trisha Collins from the Department of A Trade Consumer Protections. And uh, yeah, if if it's the, the 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 common thread here, if it's too good to be true, it's probably true. Not true. I was saying it wrong anyway. So there you go. Either way, hit the website uh, DATCP uh, for more information. Take a quick break. More to come. Watch and talk to Pittsburgh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Give your town a reason to celebrate, because every Goodwill item you bring home brings job training and more to your community. Goodwill, bring good home. I got into business as a hobby. I wasn't really thinking seriously. I said, somebody need to teach me so I don't go bankrupt. So I went to a store and I met Terry. I talked to her about my party business. This woman understand what I'm saying. There are people with amazing knowledge right there and free. My table linen entertained the first lady and the Russian first lady. That's good enough for me. <laughs> Get your free business mentor at score.org. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Wrapping up the show for today, I want to thank our friends at Department of A Trade Consumer Protection for helping us out. We certainly appreciate uh, all their time, and that pet scam is a crazy scam at best. Uh, so please, please, please do your homework. Check ahead uh, and be careful so you don't lose out on money or uh, fraud uh, and, of course, identity theft. As we wrap up, remember, stay connected with Fact TV all day long. It's easy, fast, fun, free. We love when you tune in. Have a great day, everybody. See you back here tomorrow.